morning, my dear brothers and sisters, and welcome to the Minor Basilica of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag. Today, we will celebrate the memorial of St. Maximilian Kolbe, priest and martyr. We begin our celebration. We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Sisters and brothers, let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who filled the priest and martyr Saint Maximilian Kolbe with a burning love for the Immaculate Virgin Mary and with zeal for souls and love of neighbor, graciously grant through his intercession, that striving for your glory by eagerly serving others, we may be conformed even until death to your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Our reading from the book of Joshua. Joshua gathered together all the tribes of Israel at Shechem, and addressed them, saying, Fear the Lord, and serve him completely and sincerely. Cast out the gods your fathers served beyond the river and in Egypt, and serve the Lord. If it does not please you to serve the Lord, decide today whom you will serve, the gods your fathers serve beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose country you are dwelling. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. But the people answered, Far be it from us to forsake the Lord for the service of other gods. For it was the Lord our God who brought us and our fathers up out of the land of Egypt, out of a state of slavery. He performed those great miracles before our very eyes and protected us along our entire journey and among all the peoples through whom we passed. At our approach, the Lord drove out all the peoples, including the Amorites who dwelt in the land. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for He is our God. Joshua, in turn, said to the people, You may not be able to serve the Lord, for He is a holy God. He is a jealous God who will not forgive your transgressions or your sins. If, after the good He has done for you, you forsake the Lord and serve strange gods, He will do evil to you and destroy you. But the people answered Joshua, We will still serve the Lord. Joshua therefore said to the people, You are your own witnesses that you have chosen to serve the Lord. They replied, We are indeed. Joshua continued, Now therefore put away the strange gods that are among you, and turn your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. Then the people promised Joshua, We will serve the Lord, our God, and obey his voice. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day, and made statutes and ordinances for them at Shechem, which he recorded in the book of the law of God. Then he took a large stone and set it up there under the oak that was in the sanctuary of the Lord. And Joshua said to the people, This stone shall be our witness 
for it has heard all the words which the Lord spoke to us. It shall be a witness against you, should you wish to deny your God. Then Joshua dismissed the people, each to his own heritage. After these events, Joshua, son of Nun, servant of the Lord, died at the age of a hundred and ten. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You are my inheritance, O Lord. You are my inheritance, O Lord. Keep me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, my Lord are you. O Lord, my allotted portion and my cup, you it is who hold fast my lot. You are my inheritance, O Lord. I bless the Lord who counsels me, even in the night, my heart exhorts me. I set the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. You are my inheritance, O Lord. You will show me the path to life, fullness of joys in your presence, the delights at your right hand forever. You are my inheritance, O Lord. Please stand. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. You have revealed to little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Children were brought to Jesus that he might lay his hands on them and pray. The disciples rebuked them, but Jesus said, Let the children come to me and do not prevent them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. After he placed his hands on them, he went away. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. The mercy of God is for those who are considered to be the least, the last, and the lost. The mercy of God is for those who are considered to be the least, the last, and the lost. You know, my dear brothers and sisters, if we are going to look at the Old Testament, the idea of the God that we have is that we have a God who is a creator. If we look at, if we look at the book of Genesis, klarong klaro, no? Meron tayong Dios na manglilikha. And if we talk about a God who is a creator, He is not just a God who makes something out of nothing, but He is a creator because he is also someone who sustains his creation. Yung kanyang obra maestra, pinagpapatuloy niya na buuin. Yung integrity ng kanyang gawa, pinapanatili niya. And how does he do that? By putting things into harmony. By putting things into order. And that is somehow a display of the greatness of the power of our God. Kaya sa Old Testament, kitang-kita natin yung mga kwento o yung mga idea ng mga tao tungkol sa Diyos. He is a creator. He is the one who created us. He is the one who sustains us. In the struggles that we have, He is always there to put things into order, to put things into harmony. He is a very powerful God. Yun yung idea ng Diyos, ng mga tao, patungkol sa Diyos kung titignan natin ang Old Testament. 
Now this idea somehow went into the extreme that people with that kind of idea that we have a God who is the Creator who sustains and put things into harmony and order, the people somehow understood na kung ang mga bagay-bagay pala na wala sa order, wala sa harmony, walang power is considered to be ay baka hindi para sa Diyos yan o hindi sa Diyos. Parang napaka-harmless, ano? But actually, it became a point of oppression for many, especially for the least, the last, and the lost. In fairness, makikita natin yung desire ng tao na makita ang Diyos. Nandun yun, nandun sa ating lahat yun. Gusto nating maka-experience o makaranas ng presensya ng Diyos. Kaya nga, siguro isa sa nag sa atin na pumunta sa simbahang ito, kasi narinig natin, uy, may milagro ang Diyos doon sa Manawag. Puntahan nga natin. Okay? That's normal. That's normal. But, in, in the time of the Old Testament, parang ang naging focus ng presensya ng Diyos was that power, harmony, order na kapag ka ang mga bagay-bagay o yung tao wala sa order wala sa harmony walang power walang Diyos sa Kanya Halimbawa kung ang tao merong sakit that is not in order dapat ang tao healthy dapat walang sakit what was the consideration? What was the idea during the Old Testament? Makasalanan yung taong yan. Hindi yan pinagpapala ng Diyos. Ganun yung idea. And so that is something very oppressive. Hindi ba? Wala ka namang ginawa, nagkasakit ka na nga. Nabranded ka pang makasalanan. Hindi ka lang sumunod sa ritual nang simbahan, hindi ka maghugas ng kamay kasi parte ng ritual, makasalanan ka na agad. E kasi nga, that is not in order. Remember, we have a God who is always, you know, putting things into order. It was very oppressive. The women and the children were considered to be second-class citizens. Bakit? Doesn't show power. Ang tingin sa babae noon, mahina. Ang tingin sa bata, walang kakayahan. So wala pa yung Diyos sa kanya. Second class citizen. Hindi ba oppressive yun? Hindi ba unjust yun? That is why, when our Lord Jesus Christ came, he was offering to people the other view of who our God is. Kasi ang Diyos natin, hindi lang Diyos na merong kapangyarihan, hindi lang Diyos na manlilikha, meron din tayong Diyos na merong awa na nagbibigay grasya sa sangkatauhan, walang pinipili. Walang pinipili. Mayaman, mahirap, may sakit, malusog, nagbibigay ng grasya kahit kanino man. The mercy of God is for all. Kaya nga yung daladala ng ating Panginoong Yeso Kristo was something very new. He was introducing God to people giving them a wider understanding of who our God is. Ngayon, pwede nang sabihin ng mga tao, ay, hindi pala ibig sabihin, kung may sakit ako, makasalanan la ako agad. Kaya nga, daladala ng ating Panginoong Yeso Kristo, yung pagpapagaling. 
Marami siyang pinagaling. Grace of healing was there. To show na hindi ibig sabihin, pag may sakit ka, wala na yung Diyos sa Kanya. In our gospel today, the emphasis of the mercy of God through Jesus was the children. Diba sabi ko sa inyo, considered to be second class. Kaya kung ano man yung mga biyayang ibinibigay, mga grasyang ibinibigay, doon na sila sa huli. Kung para bang, kunwari yung bakuna, ay doon ka sa pinakahuli. Parang ganun. But for, for Jesus, that is not the case. And so that is why He told His apostles, Let the children come and do not prevent them in coming to Me. Because these children were considered to be among the last, the least, and the lost of the society. E anong nararamdaman ng mga bata noon? Kakaiba siguro, no? Para bang branded na wala ang Diyos sa akin? Iintayin ko muna ang magkaroon ako ng kapangyarihan na may ipakita sa society. Tsaka lang ako consider na citizen ng aking komunidad. Parang nakakawala ng dignidad kapag ka ganun. Then our Lord Jesus Christ offered His blessing to them, asking them to come forward, placing His hands on them, and praying for them, blessing them. Kaya na-elevate ang estado ng mga bata. Ngayon, nakikita na ng mga tao, Uy! Hindi lang pala para doon sa may makapangyarihan ng Diyos. Hindi lang pala para doon sa mga considered to be righteous at nasa tama at order. Ang Diyos, even to those who are sick, even to the women, even to the children, the mercy of God is for them. The mercy of God is for us all. And that is something that we continue to enjoy until this time. Which, my dear brothers and sisters, calls all of us to share that grace, especially to those who are intended it to be, the least, the last, and the lost of our society. Araw-araw, meron tayong grasya na natatanggap sa Diyos. Minsan nga lang, hindi natin nakikita. Kasi madalas tayo, mas madalas kasi tayong tao, nagbibilang nung wala sa mga buhay natin. Wala akong kotse, wala akong pera, wala akong bahay na maganda. Mahirap magbilang ng wala. Kasi wala nga eh. Might as well look for the blessings that God has been giving us. The mere fact that we are here gathered today in this very church, it's already a big blessing for us. Maraming naka-lockdown ngayon, hindi makalabas. Ang lagi kong iniisip, paano kaya yung mga matatanda natin? Ano? Paano nila nai-enjoy yung, yung presensya ng community ng church? Paano sila nakaka-attend ng misa? Kaya napaka-blessed. Now we are asked to share that blessing to the least to the last and to the loss of our society. Sino-sino kaya yung mga yon? Yun ang magandang tanong. Sino-sino ang mga considered to be the least, the last, and the loss of our society? Yung lost, sa panahon natin ngayon, ang daling makonsidered to be someone who is lost. And what is asked of us Christians is to offer mercy to them. Because I tell you, today, if you are considered to be lost, what you are going to receive is bashing. 
Sa online, di ba? Ang dali-dali. Ang bilis mong mahusgahan. Tawag kasi nila doon, cancel culture. Cancel culture. Kapag kaayaw ka ng tao, ang dali-dali. Mm. Pag gusto ka, mm. so easy. Nag-viral lang yung isang video. Ang dami ng bashing na para bagang kilalang kilala natin yung tao. Alam na alam natin yung pinagdadaanan niya. No wonder naririnig natin sa ating society ngayon merong nagpapakamatay dahil sa pambabash, pambubuli sa social media. That is something new. Bakit? Ay merong kasing cancel culture. Andali-daling mag-judge ng tao. Parang sa panahon ng ating Panginoong Yeso Kristo. Ang dali-dali. May sakit ka lang, wala na ang Diyos sa'yo. Ngayon, meron ka lang masabing hindi maganda sa social media at nag-viral ka. Wala na ang Diyos sa'yo. Parang ganun. So as Christians, mercy is what our society is looking for. And I tell you, that mercy, that, that grace of mercy is something very rare. Very rare na yan sa panahon natin ngayon. Ngayon kasi talaga, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. Kanino inaasahan yung mercy? Sa ating Panginoong Heso Kristo at sa Kanyang mga tagasunod. Tayo yun. Tayo yun. The least, siguro yung mga bata. I really miss the presence of children in the church. Na kami sobra. And my question is, sino kaya ang nagdadala sa mga bata? O sino ang nagdadala sa mga bata ng presensya ng Diyos sa kanila? Nararamdaman pa rin kaya nila yung presensya ng Diyos kahit na nasa bahay lang sila. Kanino inaasahan yon? Kung pwede lang kami magbahay-bahay, ano? Hindi. Kanino inaasahan sa inyo nakapiling nila? Lalong-lalo na sa mga magulang. Wala silang ibang titignan, kundi kayo. Pag ayaw nyo silang, pag ayaw nyo tinitignan kayo ng mga anak ninyo, malamang ang binibigay nyo sa kanila, cellphone. Yan, dating daming bata ngayon nakatutok sa cellphone, naka-YouTube. Bakit? Ayaw tingnan, ayaw na magulang na tingnan sila. Ang gulo ng bata eh. So ko, tahimik buhay ko. Parang yung mga apostles. Panginoong Heso Kristo, paalisin natin yung mga bata ang gugulo. Huwag nating palapitin sa'yo. Then we are reminded today, the words of Christ, let the children come to me. Do not prevent them. Para sa mga magulang yun na nandirito ngayon. I remember one time, nagtanong ako sa isang bata. Sabi ko, anak, nagsisimba ka ba? This was pre-pandemic. Sabi niya, hindi po. With all smiles. Bakit? Si nanay at tatay hindi rin po nagsisimba. Simple answer. Very true. Very true. Kaya sino magpapakilala sa Diyos? Sa mga bata? Tulong-tulong po tayo. Hindi lang po kami. Kayo mismo lalo na. Yung mga magulang. Tulungan nating makilala nila ang Diyos. Tulong, ta tulong tayong ilapit sila sa ating Panginoong Heso Kristo. Nang sa gayon, makatanggap din sila ng grasya ng awa ng Diyos. So that the Lord Jesus Christ could, could place His hands on them and pray for them. Sa araw na ito, pagdasal natin yung mga considered to be the least, the last, and the loss of our society, that Christ will touch their lives, maybe through us, so that they could too receive the mercy, the graces that we enjoy from God. Magsitayo po tayong lahat. With confidence, we come and present our needs to God, our Father, who loves all His children. In every petition, let our answer be, Lord, hear our prayer.
Lord, hear our prayer, that the Church of the Homes may be built on unselfish love and that families may know and understand the depth of God's love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That married couples may be sensitive to each other's needs and find true happiness in their lives together. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That parents may bless their children with attention, caring, and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That children and those who are considered weak in our society may be supported by those who have more in life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That eternal peace be granted upon those who have died. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Now in the silence of our hearts, we offer our personal and our particular intentions, and we also pray for the intentions of this Mass. Father, your kingdom belongs to little children. Hear the prayers of your children who trust in you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Please stand. Pray, my dear sisters and brothers, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We present our oblations to you, O Lord, humbly and praying that we may learn from the example of Saint Maximilian to offer our very lives to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you are glorified when your saints are praised. Their very sufferings are but wonders of your might. In your mercy, you give ardor to their faith, to their endurance, you grant firm resolve. And in their struggle, the victory is yours through Christ our Lord. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we, with all the host of angels, cry out, and without end, we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, 
And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Socrates, our Bishop, Fidelis, his assistant Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Dominic, Saint Maximilian, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Please stand. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we all dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously, Grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. We offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God, the Son of Mary. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am, I am not worthy that, that you should enter under, under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
please stand. Let us pray. We pray, O Lord, that renewed by the body and blood of your Son, we may be inflamed with the same fire of charity that Saint Maximilian received from this holy banquet. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bago po tayo magtapos ng misa, ako po ay magpapasalamat sa ating lector, commentators, sa ating acolytes, sa ating Eucharistic ministers, at sa inyong lahat po na nag-iisa sa misa ito. Maraming maraming salamat po. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you all. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has been offered. We all go in peace. Thanks be to God. We shall now have the prayer for the blessing of the sick and the blessing of our rosaries and other religious articles. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. Let us pray. God, our Almighty Father, by your blessing you give us strength and support in our frailty. Turn with kindness towards our brothers and sisters. Free them from all illness and restore them to good health through the intercession of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag, so that, in the sure knowledge of your goodness, they will gratefully bless your holy name. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In memory of the mysteries of the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the honor and glory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of Christ and Mother of the Church, Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag, may these rosaries, images, candles, oils, and other religious articles our devotees and pilgrims be blessed and made holy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.